thank you, Nikki. For I think my the topic of mine is books here or gone tomorrow. I want to look at the future of professional development publishing and particularly methodology books being a series editor for the Cambridge Handbook series and also a writer of methodology books and a collector of methodology books. I was just talking to Dr. Richard Smith of um, University of Warwick about how I started, got interested in collecting not just old textbooks and dictionaries and grammars but methodology books and looking at the kind of wisdom that's encapsulated in them and how important these books must have been to generations of teachers. I think when I, I think with shame now, the first book that I ever read about teaching was a book by Earl Stevick, which I found when I had been teaching for five years in Egypt. My excuse was that it was not easy to get books uh, in Egypt, but it completely changed my whole perception of teaching, and uh, I've never stopped reading since. And I think it's a great shame, therefore, that there seems to be a trend, and I'm not saying I'm predicting this trend, it's actually happening where there's less and less uh, uptake in terms of actual people buying or even producing methodology books for professional development. Um, without wanting to give away any figures, uh, it, there certainly seems to be less, uh, <laughs> less buying by individual teachers, at least. Of, now, why? Well, one reason, of course, is for all the reasons that Nikki was saying, because the access to material online uh, the internet and blogging and so on and so on has, has replaced the need for people to out, go out and physically buy books. The other negative side of the internet, of course, is piracy. Piracy on a massive scale. And I've given up trying to follow all the times that books of mine or my series have been uh, illegally copied and given away. And it's a shame because I know what the process of writing and publishing a methodology book is like. It's rigorous. It's absolutely rigorous. I'm not just saying that because I'm here for Cambridge, but any publisher I've worked for takes this job incredibly seriously. So a lot of thought goes into the writing of the book, the choosing of the authors, the reviewing of the book, the trialing of the activities, the production values that are invested in a book. That's why it takes a long time. That's why books... When I think back now of some of the seminal books in my own training, books that were written by people in this very room, Jack Richards, Penny Err, uh, which really were so important in my formation as a teacher. And I think that uh, it would be sad to lose the quality of that kind of input. Uh, to quote Penny, in fact, uh, who said in her methodology book, 1996, she, she said, reading may be, for some, a substitute for courses and conferences. But the converse is not true. Courses and conferences, like this, are no substitute for reading. And uh, I think that's so true. So my prediction is that reading won't go away and reading about professional development, but I hope that print and digital published books will also remain as if maybe a niche market, but they will retain the kind of values and quality that has been part of the long tradition of academic publishing. That's my prediction, so thank you.